Welcome to About That Business, a show where we talk to athletes that are building brands. Today, I'm talking to Jermaine O'Neal, who spent 18 years in the NBA. He's made a number of great moves since retiring, none more important than his legacy projects. Let's get a listen. I'm super excited to talk to you. Having come right out of high school and spent so many years in the NBA, and now you've been thriving as, as an entrepreneur. I'm wondering, are you doing the thing that you thought you'd be doing once you retired? Originally, when I started thinking about uh, doing something that was um, outside of basketball, was had to be the first time I actually injured my knee. When I hurt my injured my knee the first time, it was more of a situation where I was like, hmm, and I can't run as fast, jump as high uh, as I could before before the injury. So I probably should start looking at things. Uh, that interests me and not necessarily taking away from you know me doing my craft which was basketball but you know just looking at you know what what my second chapter would look like so while you're still in the game having had that injury were there people that you were reaching out to other players retired players that you're asking advice from about what to think about as you're preparing and thinking through like what my life would be like I have a business manager that's been with me for 20 plus years and and he's been uh, really instrumental in, in my ability to look at different things I think you know everybody talks about the the natural way to do business, but you know, typically you have to actually go through some some losses to understand what you really, really want to do, right? And I remember one of the biggest things that I remember right away is I spent a half a million dollars on a recording studio with you know w- without music actually being a passion for me, uh, it was more of a passion for some friends. And then I realized that hey, I need to you know that's too big of a loss. I can't make that same mistake anymore. If I'm gonna lose, I need to lose on something. Um, that I'm really, really passionate about. And through the process of getting obviously older and getting a little bit more mature about you know, my business sector, um, yeah, I started learning about different things that really, um, that I really grew a passion for. Tell me about those things that you grew a passion for. What were the things that you were reaching out to? It actually has been an evolution when it comes to business. I've owned Church's Chickens, tech businesses, real estate, um, invest in a couple of funds that built, uh, took two-star resorts and, and made them five-star resorts. And it's been kind of a mix of, of different things. And even now to the point where I'm doing youth sports, uh, which is more of a legacy project for me. Well, tell me a little bit about the diversity of things that you invested in, Church's Chicken and smoothies. I'm wondering if, are you leading with your gut? Like you start with saying like, where do I want to eat? And maybe I will invest in that, or here's a technology that I personally use. So I'll invest in that company. What's the decision process like? For well, you? what I did was I took uh, the same format that I would take if I was a free agent in, in basketball, right? Uh, typically, you're not you're not going to want to go if you're if you're talking about winning and winning a championship, you're not going to want to go to a losing scenario or partner with people that have not won, right? And so, what I typically try to do is if I'm interested in the sector, I look at some, who who my partners will be. You know, what what is their you know what is their history of success in doing what I'm trying to do? And that's basically how I I, I leverage myself in every business business opportunity. Well, then tell me about Drive Nation. Tell me about the birth of it. When did the the idea come to be? And what are you trying to achieve with what you're building for these young people? This is actually a business that I had no intentions on getting into. It just it just happens. And I, and I truthfully believe this guy's will. I only got into it because my, my, my daughter, who's now at the University of Texas playing volleyball, uh, when we moved to Dallas about seven years ago, she was playing volleyball and, and we noticed that we had to take her to a bunch of different places. And if you know Dallas, everything's 25, you know, 30 minutes you know, apart because, you know, it's, it's so big, the Metroplex is so big. And so, you know, I was wondering like, you know, hey, like why, you know, why can't we just put her in one place and get the services that we need from one place? You know, Dallas has a ton of uh, sports facilities here. I think maybe 12, 13 sports facilities. And I just went and visited all of them and looked at what they did right and what they did wrong. And then and, and end up building one. And what it really is, is just a home for uh, youth athletes to come in and be educated, not just physically, but mentally. We just started our fourth year in existence. And in three years, we have 52 Division One athletes. And, and actually we have three that are in this year's 2020 NBA draft. Uh, so we, you know, we feel pretty good about uh, our success numbers, our end game, uh, and our winning uh, solution is, is seeing how many kids that we can get to uh, help get to college. Tell me a little bit about the day-to-day kind of interaction you may have been able to have with some of these athletes and some of the parents. I can imagine they've got a million questions for you and you want to impart some wisdom on them from your experience. Tell me a little bit about how those conversations go. You know, again, I, I run the business. This is the one business sector that I actually run as a parent. 
right? And I always had to remind myself, what, what would I want? You know, my daughter coming out of high school was the number one player in the country in volleyball. I remember her first year, I didn't know anything about volleyball. Now I'm a career basketball guy and didn't know anything about volleyball and I needed people to tell me. Now, fortunately for myself, I was able to reach out to some other people um, and I had the tools to get the information. But you'd be surprised on how many people that are in our communities that lack tools and information, right? And, and that is the one thing that is really, really important to me to make sure that we give what, that, what those opportunities are to our parents so then they can make an educated decision about what they want to do with their daughter or their son. And that's, to me, that's the most impactful thing about you know, being involved with Drive Nation. When they leave from us, they need to be more prepared for the next level. Are there any basketball type strategies that you employ with what you're doing now with Drive Nation, an attitude and mentality that you use? You don't know what you don't know, right? But you are you, you set your mission to go to, to get to a certain place, right? And that's to win and be successful at what you do. Uh, and then you have to go through your process and your process is your work ethic or what you put into it every single day. And that's kind of what I took, I took from it. My purpose, you know, for me is always to have my daughter and my son to see me be successful away from what I did with my hands and my feet. That is really, really important to me. And that's something that I sleep, I sleep and eat and breathe every single day. So when it comes to Drive Nation, that mentality is, hey, look, we learned year one, we learned year two, we, we learned year three, and now we're in that window, the three to five year process of knowing that you have a successful business is we have to go win now. Right. You know, we've gotten that rookie year out of the way and, and then the sophomore year. Now it's, now it's time for us to put some stuff together and get it done. Are there any individual people that have who have done it? And you're like, I want to make sure that I'm doing at least as good. That's what made this so difficult. I didn't know anybody that did, you know, did this. I ended up hiring a company beforehand that um, helped me understand just the kind of, just kind of the dynamics of building the facility. The DNA of, of that that building the operations had to come from me, not to mention uh, that we had some, some incredible challenges. Long story short, I ended up building this building just out of my pocket. I told my wife, you know, I went home, I said, hey, look, you know, we're having a little bit of issues with, you know, getting some funding. Um, I know, you know, these challenges that we're going through is, is for a purpose and it's going to lead to something bigger, much bigger than we, than we expect. So is it okay that I fund this development? Can you imagine going home and, and, and telling your mate that you, <laughs> that you're, you're, you're about to fund something that you've never done before. Wow, that's amazing. That takes vision. That takes <laughs> passion. I've imagined, you know, it's 2020. There are a lot of things that we weren't able to prepare for in the way that you're trying to prepare your kids and yeah. their families for the next stage of life. And now you, you've been hit by the biggest pandemic in human history. Talk to me about how you're navigating all of this stuff, especially with the COVID. The way our business, this sector works is that once you press start on the year, it's just like a, every you know, every day, every weekend is something, right? You know, we were able to, to, to do things sharply and, and, and try to do things as safely as possible. Uh, obviously the concerns that we have on, on any given day is these kids not only you know, going home or come, you know, coming from school is, is basically coming to that building and, and affecting other people and you know most importantly how can we open the doors and make sure that we keep everybody as safe as possible uh, and we were able to you know peel back you know the entire organization and also evaluate myself as an owner uh, and the entire business on what we were doing correctly and what we wasn't doing to get the job done i appreciate this conversation jermaine i think you're building some huge things to be completely honest uh, olivia we're looking at using these sports facilities and building small towns around them Right, and most cities are now starting to get away from minor league teams, which are seasonal. We know we can bring, you know, minimum a thousand people to an area over a two-day span, and in many cases, through, you know, a couple of thousand people. So we know the economic impact that we've done um, in our business at the airport, and so we're looking to do these right now. We're working in in three other cities right now and building not only facilities but building hotels and eateries and shopping. It's challenging, um, but if you're trying to build something that's successful, some something that's sustainable something that you can emulate you know multiple times over in multiple cities and also actually build off of it then you better get the first one right and, and leave no doubt when it comes to uh, not only revenue but you know the functionality of, of the business and how people perceive it thanks to jermaine for being a guest and to you for watching please subscribe to this channel and for more information about this show and our upcoming guests like us love us and follow us on facebook linkedin and instagram until next time